WSDQ Dunlap, WEPG South Pittsburgh, The Copperhead, WSDT Saudi Daisy, Chattanooga. The viewpoints expressed on Liberty Works Radio Network are not necessarily those of the network, its affiliates, or sponsors. This is Liberty Works Radio Network. Now live from coast to coast and around the globe, more real talk, the kind you want, on Liberty Works Radio Network. Welcome to the Freedom Forum with Delegate Mike Schmeagle, LWRN.net. You can call in today and join us at 410-848-9191. That's 410-848-9191. Last week, we had a our, uh, our, our conversation with the people who were representing the Trump campaign. And this week, we have with us Mr. David Sarenda, and he is with the Cruz campaign. Mr. Sarenda, you there? I am, Delegate Smigo. How are you, sir? Outstanding, David. Outstanding. Tell us a little bit about uh, you know your background, what you do, and uh, what exactly you're doing with the uh, Cruz campaign. Now, first, I just want to say thank you for allowing me to come on and share about uh, why I am supporting Senator Cruz. And right now, I am serving as the Maryland State Director uh, for the Cruz campaign. And uh, my background, ironically enough, is not in uh, politics. Uh, My background is primarily in the ministry and in, in sales. But one of the reasons that I got involved uh, in the campaign was, you know, I, I have two daughters and, you know, I, I believe that this election is, is very critical to their future. And, you know, Senator Cruz has been uh, the one politician, the one person that has gone to Washington and has, has actually done what he said he would do. And so when he decided to run for president, I decided to get behind him and to do everything um, in my power to um, help get him elected. Oh, outstanding. And and just out of curiosity, what what do you do as uh, far as in the ministry? Uh, My ministry background, uh, I have served as a uh, missionary um, here stateside. I helped to um, start a nonprofit organization when I was in Ohio and have um, served in different capacities in uh, the local church and um, often uh, teach Sunday school and um, fill in with um, pulpit supply and, and, and preach as well. In the oh, oh, outstanding, outstanding. It's a, an unusual combination uh, to find your way into politics there and to be directing a presidential campaign uh, for Maryland. So uh, tell us some of the things that uh, you said that you had watched uh, Senator Cruz do in the uh, Senate and uh, to keep his word, the things that he said he was going to do. What are some of those things that... Uh, um, you were impressed by and you know, brought you to the campaign? You know, one of the things I, I think that um, what really impressed me the most was um, the debate over Obamacare. And as you and, and your listeners are aware, you know, Obamacare was, was forced upon the American people um, because we had a speaker at the time, um, Speaker Pelosi, who went before the American people and simply said that you know, we need to pass the legislation um, before we can read it or, or know what's in it. And we've seen how that has worked out for us. And Senator Cruz, when he was running for Senate in Texas, uh, campaigned um, that uh, against Obamacare. And when he went to Washington, D.C., um, he stood up against Obamacare. And as um, many of your listeners may uh, recall, um, you know, he led the um um, fight against Obamacare for some 20 some hours speaking on the the floor. And, um, you know, individuals had came to help him, like Senator Rand Paul um, at, at times. And, you know, we were much appreciative of, of his support in that. But at, at the end of the day, you know, he didn't really have the support that he needed uh, to get behind him. And um, if, if the other elected officials had kept their promises, um, Absolutely. You know, we, we may be at a different situation well, well, that, um, that today was, than where we are. That was the problem. We had a whole lot of people who said all the right things and did all the right things, uh, wrong things. And uh, our current congressman here, uh, Andy Harris, is one. He said he'd fight Obamacare, but then voted for the Cromnibus bill, which fully funded it. And you can't come out later and say, yes, I fought it if you voted to fully fund it. And we had many Republicans that did that. 
You know, and, and I think, you know, one of the things that, that I will say, and Senator Cruz talks about it very often, in, in 2010, um, we won the House. And in 2014, we won the Senate. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, we, we keep sending people to Washington and, and nothing changes. And, you know, Senator Cruz talks a great deal in his book, A Time for Truth, um, you, you know, about um, just what happens when you do try to stand up to the Washington cartel. And so I think one of the things that I respect about Senator Cruz is his willingness to tell the truth. And to me, I think that's a, a very rare find. And it's something that, that, that drew me to him as a uh, candidate. And again, it's, it's just one of those things that I believe that, that you know, we, we need uh, to get behind those individuals that, that keep their word. And um, I, Senator Cruz has, has been a long, you know, a, a strong advocate um, for doing that. I, I, I tend to phrase it as uh, those who put the principle over the politics or over the party. And there's too many that will compromise the principles. They go home and tell everybody, I stand for this principle, but go to Washington, D.C., they get out of touch, and they start voting either with their party uh, because Boehner tells them which way to go, or they vote for some political reason for something. And, you know, as well as I do, you know as well as I do, that there are many ways to hide what you're actually doing, uh, putting amendments in, uh, voting for the amendments, putting them in a bill, and then voting against the bill, and going home and telling everybody that you were against the bill, but you made it a really bad bill when it passed. You know, so, so it's nice to find that there are people who uh, stand on principle. No, and and that's one thing I think um, has been very evident over Senator Cruz's career is that you know he has been a a principled conservative, um, and and I think that's really um, key to. Um, why he um, is where he is um, in this presidential election cycle. Now, now, now yeah. you, when you spoke of his career, um, prior to being a senator, um, can you tell us, some, I think he was with the Federal Trade Commission, do you have any information about his background when he was with them? Correct. When, when Senator Cruz was um, worked for the um, Federal Trade Commission, it was probably his, his longest tenure um, in, in his career. Um, he he um, dealt a lot with um, policy and he dealt with policy um, as it relates to um, leveling the playing field and trying to end the um, cronyism that exists um, in business. And is again, as, as you and your listeners are aware, so oftentimes, you know, the lobbyists control um, Washington, D.C. It's why he often refers to it as the Washington cartel. And, you know, as um, a policy um, champion there at the Federal Trade Commission, he was able to break down a lot of the barriers um, that had been built up to keep Internet startup companies um, from being able to compete with, you know, the big box stores, so to speak. Um, and he was also able to roll back a lot of the cronyism. And, you know, remarkably, you know, his critics will say um, that Senator Cruz isn't able to work in a bipartisan fashion. But when you go through and look at his policy papers, you will notice that he was able to get those policy papers through both a, a Democratic and a Republican um, controlled commission. There were, um, I believe, three um, each. And he was able to get many of those policy papers uh, pushed through uh, unanimously um, uh, from, from, from both sides of the aisle. Um, well, that's, that, that's one of the criticisms that I don't really give a lot of credence to. Having spent 12 years in the Maryland legislature, um, I much rather would have somebody who um, fights against their own party when it's doing something that's against principle and they're not following the principles of the Constitution. Um, I want somebody down there who's going to remind them we're not hypocrites. You know, we're here to stand up for certain principles. And that, uh, often you will find there are a few people who actually go down there and both sides of the aisle. You'll see Democrats will stand up and fight against things Democrats are doing. Um, and you'll see a few uh, occasionally uh, Republicans will do that. And they're usually that one red vote up on the board or that one, you know, green vote up on a board um, in uh, principled opposition to what, you know, everybody else is doing. So it is, you do need them and there are few and far in between. You do need to have that. So it's an unfair rap sometimes to say they don't get along because actually, if you take a look, they get a lot of legislation that's bipartisan because what I've found is the other side comes to them and says, Hey, if you put your name on this, 
the others in your party are going to say it's okay because they know you wouldn't be here if it weren't. So. Right. Well, you know, one thing uh, I, I will say, you know, if you if you ever meet a, a politician and uh, they tell you that they are well liked in Washington D.C., uh, the best thing you could probably do is run the other way. And if they tell you that they want to make a deal, the best thing that you could probably do is hold on to your wallet because they're about to spend your money. Not too shy. Uh, that's often the case. So anything else with the Federal Trade Commission, uh, any other examples of, uh, you know, things that he worked in there? He told us about the Internet. Uh, that's one. Any other uh, areas that uh, the listeners will find was uh, beneficial to them? You know, I think the, I think the biggest thing really – it's just being able to um, find solutions to the problems that, you know, the American people are facing. And, you know, we, we live in an economy right now that, that is facing tremendous stagnation and malaise, um, primarily because of the Obama-Clinton economy. And so we need to make sure that as we look for our next president, that we are sending someone to uh, Washington to be president that knows what it takes and what climate uh, there needs to be um, in order to create an atmosphere in which we can allow small businesses to thrive. Because too often times, you know, corporate America uh, controls everything. And, you, you know, the majority of jobs in this country are co- created by small businesses. And um, that is, I think, the primary focus that, that he had in those policy papers is putting the small businesses in this country on an even playing field with the large corporations because he understands at the end of the day, um, small businesses, when given a fair shake and an equal footing uh, as the large corporations, will will be able to thrive, will be able to create jobs, will be able to generate the economic boom uh, that we need in this country. And, and what small businesses are looking for, quite honestly, is just to get the, the, the boot of the federal government off their neck so they can be free to do what they do best, and that is to uh, employ Marylanders and, 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 and folks all across our country. Uh, really important to understand that that is not a concept that seems to even be understood by the Democrats. Um, they have, and I, it bothers the heck out of me when they go in there and say, we're going to create these jobs. We're going to, government doesn't create jobs. It interferes with the creation of jobs. And it's good to see that, you know, all the, hopefully the Republicans uh, understand that and they're going to, you know, get the regulations as well as the taxation under control um, and out of the way of uh, business being able to uh, go forward. And as a segue into that, uh, when we come back, um, here in a few moments from our commercial break, what we'll do is uh, hopefully go into his tax plan and talk about what the um, cruise tax plan is and how that will help small business, uh, large business, and uh, the middle class. Uh, if that's something that uh, you feel comfortable going into, and I think that uh, uh, Senator Cruz um, favors the flat tax. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, would so, love yeah. Pardon me? Would, would love to have that discussion. Oh, outstanding. So um, what we're going to do is uh, take a commercial break here shortly, and when we come back, we'll take phone calls at 410-848-9191. That's 410-848-9191. And you can call in on the Freedom Forum, lwrn.net, and speak with myself and Mr. David Surrenda the Maryland State Director for the Cruz Presidential Campaign, and we're going to be discussing uh, the tax plan as well as other uh, plans and policies that the Cruz uh, Campaign has for uh, improving small business in Maryland and the country and making sure that we're able to prosper and get the uh, boot of, as you said, government off the neck of uh, small business. Sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan. Looking forward to it. Okay, we'll see you right back after this commercial at uh, Freedom Forum, LWRN.net, 410-848-9191. Call in and join Mr. David Surrender and myself, the Maryland State Director for the Bruce Campaign. Thank you.
Now live from coast to coast and around the globe, more real talk, the kind you want, on Liberty Works Radio Network. Welcome back to Freedom Forum, LWRN.net, and you can call in at 410-848-9191 and join David Serenda and I. Uh, David is the Maryland State Director for the Cruz Presidential Campaign. And uh, call in any questions you've got. Join David and I. And, uh, David, when we left, we were going to talk about the uh, flat tax plan of uh, Senator Cruz. And you want to let us know a little bit about that, and we can uh, see what uh, that offers. No, absolutely. Uh, You you know, one of the interesting things that um, Senator Cruz has talked about this year that I believe is, is absolutely critical to um, igniting economic growth in our country, and that is uh, revising uh, and redoing how uh, our tax system is set up right now. Uh, r- right now, the the IRS has has turned into um, an agency, as we have seen, that has targeted conservatives and religious organizations. And uh, you know, um, Senator Cruz has advocated for abolishing the IRS. And I have yet to meet anybody that um, does not support um, getting rid of the uh, Internal Revenue Service. And so how do we do that? Uh, Well, the way we do that is by implementing a flat tax. Right now, um, I believe we have seven different brackets in in which our taxes are paid. Um, That can range anywhere from about 16 percent all the way up to about 35 percent. And so what we do is we take all seven brackets and we reduce them down to one 10 percent bracket. Um, the second thing that we do is we increase the um, standard deduction. So for a husband and wife, that standard deduction would go to 20000 And then we increase the standard deduction for um, children as well. So, for example, I'm married. I have two wonderful children. Um, our family of four would pay zero taxes on the first $36,000 of income. Anything above that 36000 we would pay a flat 10%. So it doesn't matter if you make $40,000 a year or if you make $4 million a year. Uh, everyone is paying the same 10%. So you no longer have a secretary that's paying a, a higher rate than, you know, the executive uh, or, or the, the owner of the, the business that she, she works at. Um, the second aspect of that is a business flat tax of 16%. That would be a flat tax regardless if you are, again, a small business or a, um, a large corporation. On that side, we're able to eliminate the corporate tax. Um, we're able to eliminate the death care tax. Um, we're able to eliminate the payroll tax, um, the Obamacare tax. Um, and, and don't you love when I use the word eliminate with tax? Yeah. Um, um, well, that, that, I that, guess... that, that's a great word um, to have in front of the word tax, by the way. Who has looked at uh, this plan and, you know, what do they had to say about it? You know, have you had organizations, groups outside? You know, I know they've evaluated all the various plans of the various people who were running and, uh, you know, had things to say about them. But uh, who are you pointing to to say, hey, they approve our plan, they say it's a good thing? Um, anybody out there? Um, sure. Actually, the, um, the Independent Tax Foundation, if, if people were to go to um, the taxfoundation.org, um, they can look at uh, each of the tax proposals that are out there. And, you know, one of the interesting things about Senator Cruz's um, plan is, you know, they estimate that it would probably create approximately about 4.8 million um, new jobs, uh, w- which is absolutely incredible. Um, you know, the other thing that it would do is it would also uh, drive up wages. All right, um, so we'll, we'll go back to the tax plan. Um, I don't know sure. how much uh, people heard before uh, we had one of the bugs get in the system there and eat one of the wires. So uh, what we had is the tax plan that you were telling me about and about how uh, there was going to be the elimination of the death tax, the Obamacare tax, some of the corporate taxes and such. And I had asked you if anybody had looked at this and then graded the plans, and you were going to give us some information on the people who were actually out there who had rated any of the plans. Yeah, absolutely. So the Tax Foundation um, has looked at Senator Cruz's tax plan, and um, they had said that it would have the largest impact um, of any of the the presidential um, plans that had um, put together. And one of the things that it would do 
is um, the, the tax plan would actually increase the size of the economy by about 13.9% um, over the long run, uh, which is absolutely um, incredible. The other thing that it would do is it would also increase um, an, an increase in wages by about 14%. Um, percent. So I don't know about most Americans, but if, if I was able to get a 14% pay increase out of uh, a, a tax plan, that would definitely be something that I would be in favor of. And, and the other thing is 4.8 million jobs? And, and 4.8 million jobs. Um, so the, the other aspect of this that's, that's really interesting, because we eliminate the payroll tax, um, what that means is every time that you work, every time that you go to work and you look at your paycheck, um, and, and most people have quit because it's just depressing, and you look at how much money the federal government takes away from you, um, that all goes away under this plan. And so it, it would put um, approximately, and, and now don't quote me on this number because I'm, I'm trying to go from off of memory here, but, but about 6500 to uh, $10,500 uh, in your pocket over the course of a year, um, depending on where your income is. And so you would begin to take home a larger portion of what you have. And here's the beautiful thing is you would be able to fill out your taxes on a postcard. And so you would eliminate um, having to uh, go through and, and do all the deductions. Now, we do allow for two deductions, and that is charitable giving and the, the, the um, mortgage interest write-offs. Um, but all, all the other Very deductions good. would be done away with under the plan. Um, outstanding. I like the mortgage interest uh, is one of the things that a lot of people were concerned might go away, and the charitable uh, deductions will keep people willing and able to give who are able to give the um you were speaking earlier about with you know the elimination of the irs or at least what would be done uh with that and i don't know if you saw it was either today or yesterday that there was a federal judge came down with a blistering uh decision i think he called the obama's irs um thuggish for their uh, behavior towards the uh conservative organizations and groups where they were targeting them? Uh, were you able to see that? And what, what would happen with the IRS under his plan? Uh, basically, the IRS, um, you know, two things. Number one, the IRS would basically just become a, a collection agency, uh, meaning they would solely be responsible for collecting revenue, um, which eliminates their ability um, to go out and, and abuse their powers um, through audits. And, and so, you know, Senator Cruz has also jokes, you know, the other thing um, someone asked me once, what do you do with all the IRS agents um, that you no longer need? And uh, the response was simple. You send them to um, the border along the Rio Grande. And uh, the illegal immigrants who are coming across the Rio Grande would take one look at all the IRS agents and willingly turn around and run home. Touche. Um, well, that's a nice plan for the IRS. That it's uh, one of the best plans I've seen is to uh, deport them. The uh, question with regards to the uh, tax plans, you see some people talk, um, not necessarily going with the flat tax, but they talk about the um, uh, a, uh, 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 when you purchase the uh, consumer consumption uh, tax. The, uh, the consumption tax. The question there is whether or not it actually uh, causes there to be savings and people will uh, you know, put money away. And I, I've seen it both ways. You want to address those who may um, be thinking about or favor the consumption tax versus the flat tax? Look, look I think personally, I, I think both plans are, are, are great plans. I, I think trying to go from our tax system that we have to a consumption tax is a, um, a, a more involved process than trying to move from where we are uh, to a flat tax. So I believe it's more attainable. I believe it is an easier process to be able to move people to. And and then at some point, could we move to a, a consumption tax? Sure. I, I think that would be something that, you know, um, w would be open for debate and, and, and would be, um, you know, I'm sure Senator Cruz would love to be able to to look at that. I, I think the other thing on the, the, the flat tax is you talk about savings is one of the things on the individual side that we allow for is that we the, the campaign also allows for individuals to save up to twenty five thousand um, dollars tax deferred. 
that you would be able to put into a savings account that you would control as a family. And you would be able to take that uh, t- up to $25,000 in savings off of your, your tax liability. And as you spent that money, uh, then you would pay the, the 10% tax on it. Um, so it would be like an IRA, but without the penalty uh, for early withdrawal. But you would what? be able to defer the taxes on it. Is um, Senator Cruz looking at all towards any kind of HMAs with regards to health ma- uh, ma- uh, maintenance accounts of the health accounts with regards to being able to save for your own health care if they do away with Obamacare? And if so, how would that fit into his tax structure? Would they be tax deductible? You know, I, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure on that, so I, I just want to be careful and not to answer okay. that um, incorrectly. But, you know, one of the things about the, the issue with Obamacare is obviously once Obamacare is, is repealed and, and Senator Cruz has made it very clear that on his first day, you, you know, in office, you know, he, he wants Congress to pass legislation, put it on his desk so he can sign it repealing Obamacare, um, is we have to do something to be able to replace it. And so whether you want to hold that to the next segment. Um, well, as I think that that's something else that we, you know, we can also go over. Um, is with regards to the health care. And then also when we come back uh, uh, in a few minutes here, I want to try to get some information on the uh, states' rights issue and uh, yeah. talk a bit about that if that's okay. And sure. I want to make sure that you have time to give us some information about how if people are interested in the Cruz campaign, they can contact you um, to get involved in the campaign. And so give us some of the information uh, when we come back uh, from the commercial and that way uh, people will be able to get a hold of you, and uh, we'll also get some information on states' rights and if you want to on the Obamacare, because uh, I think that is the number one thing that we need to immediately take care of is uh, Obamacare. And if uh, you have a plan for uh, how to deal with uh, ISIS, um, you know, and, and what that plan would be, uh, you know, I know that's a lot for a 15-minute uh, segment, but that obviously uh, would be something we'd be very much interested in uh, knowing about. Uh, Absolutely. When we get back. So what we're going to do is invite people to call in, and they can call in at 410-848-9191, 410-848-9191. Join us on the Freedom Forum here at lwrn.net. It's Michael Smeagle, and I'm here with Mr. David Sarenda, the Maryland State Director for the presidential campaign. Thank you, and we'll see you right back after this commercial break. All rise. If your problems are legal, call Mike Schmeagle. 1-877-SMI-GIEL. That's 1-877-SMI-GIEL. Remember, if your problems are legal, call Mike Schmeagle. 1-877-SMI-GIEL. Now live from coast to coast and around the globe, more real talk, the kind you want, on Liberty Works Radio Network. Welcome back to Freedom. Welcome back to Freedom Forum with Delegate Mike Spiegel, LWRN.net. Our number is 410-848-9191. Please call in and join David Sarenda, the Maryland State Director of the Cruz Presidential Campaign, and myself. Um, David, when we left off, we were going to talk about uh, states' rights, but you had some place you wanted to go first um, before we went there. Is that correct? Yes. Just wanted to talk real quick just on um, the issue of, of um, health insurance because I know it's, it's important to a lot of people. And, you know, Senator Cruz actually wrote legislation and, and put pen and paper together and um, had introduced legislation called the um, Health um, Care Choices Act. And um, people can look up the legislation, read it online if they are interested. Um, but what it does is it's, it's, it, it eliminates the barriers, obviously, that are preventing um, people from being able to purchase insurance across state lines. Um, it, it opens up competition, which is really one of the key factors in trying to drive down costs. Um, the, the second um, thing that, that Senator Cruz has, has written and co-sponsored with Senator Mike Lee 
of, of Utah, who also, by the way, hasn't come out and endorsed Senator Cruz, um, is the um, um, reform, um, reform of 2015, which is a um, re- bill that reforms the Food and Drug Administration. And what that does is it drives down cost by um, expediting the process whereby the Food and Drug Administration can um, approve um, medications, medical devices that have already been approved and are being used in places like Canada, Europe, et cetera, um, and bring those um, medications, devices into the United States, driving that cost down and making things more affordable. The other thing that um, Senator Cruz has talked about that, that's very unique is um, because we can drive down costs um, by opening up competition and doing these things, we can also disassociate um, medical insurance from our employers. So people no longer have to work a job that they hate or they don't like um, simply because they have health insurance. And so you would be able to buy your insurance just like you buy your car insurance. Um, and so it would be personal, it would be portable, and it would be affordable. And and those are really the the, the three key factors, really, when you're, you're talking about ownership, because as conservatives, you know, as libertarians, we believe in, in self-responsibility, um, but, but we also believe in self-ownership. And, and, and by making our insurance that way, it gives us something, and we own it, we control it, and, and it's ours. Uh, the big question that uh, everybody always talks about is with uh, pre-existing illnesses. Uh, is that something specifically uh, you can speak to as how that's addressed under this program, or um, do you feel comfortable about uh, I just don't know how much uh, information you've got on that. No, my understanding is that, that um, obviously we, we still would allow, um, you, you know what I'm saying, for pre-existing conditions to be covered. Okay, so um, when I uh, leave my employer and I go to my own health plan that I purchased, um, they would have to accept my pre-existing conditions if I chose that health plan? That is my understanding, but again, I, I, I'm not going to say confidently, okay. but that, that is my understanding that, that I believe that we do keep the, um, pre, the pre-existing condition side of it. Okay. Um, you would need some it, form of a transition, you, you know what I'm saying, for, for those who, who are already being treated who, who have issues. Okay. Well, I don't think anybody's going to argue with the fact that the anything is going to be better than what we've uh, got with the Obama plan, which has pretty much destroyed the finest health plan that uh, was in the world. So, you know, we had all the And millions of jobs, so. Uh, and absolutely. And it's cre- yes, millions of jobs because I, I know so many people that are working two and three jobs because they're not allowed to be over the barrier where the employer then has to pick them up on a health care plan. So everybody falls right below whatever that amount of hours is, whether they increase it or decrease it. The, um, I wanted to ask you about the states' rights issues um, with regards to uh, the congressman. Oh, excuse me, the senator. Sure. Um, you know, obviously being a, a, a constitutional um, lawyer and um, having clerked for Chief Justice William Rehnquist, having worked in the um, Justice Department, um, being the Solicitor General uh, of the state of Texas, um, having argued before the, the Supreme Court on, on, on many landmark cases, um, in, in, including um, Heller, which protected our, our Second Amendment rights. Um, Senator Cruz knows a thing or two about the Constitution. And what, what um, Senator Cruz has, has, has consistently said over the course of his entire life is that if it's not laid out in, in the Constitution, it's relegated to the states. And, uh, you, you know, that um, is a policy that sometimes is not necessarily easy. Uh, Article 1, Section 8, policy. I believe, correct? I'm sorry? I said Article 1, Section 8, you know, it lays it out Absolutely. specifically. Um, it, it, it just it goes back to, to, to the states. And, and so, um, you, you know, um, you have to be consistent in, in your state rights um, positions. Um, either you respect them and, and honor them or you don't. And, you know, oftentimes, you know, I think it was um, Justice Scalia who, who recently passed away, um, sometimes would, would look and make the remark, you know, um, you know, get mad because the Constitution, uh, you know, he had to side with the Constitution and not his own personal beliefs. And you know, Senator Cruz has, has proven over and over again um, that, that he's willing to set aside his personal beliefs 
um, to to honor in in respect um, the document that we are bound by in this country. I, I I couldn't agree more. I often say it's easy to defend the Constitution when it's not under attack, and right. the uh, the perfect example of the states' rights issue you're talking about is too many Republicans who say they're conservatives are being hypocritical when they argue, well, we're just going to pass a law that takes care of same-sex marriage across the country, when, in fact, that's not something that the federal government has the authority to do under Article One, Section 8, and yet the Tenth Amendment had it doing exactly as it was intended, and the states were developing their own uh, ways of handling it. Some were saying, no, we won't have any same-sex marriage. Some were saying, we'll have it under this kind of a system. Uh, maybe just everybody who gets married by government will be, you know, a domestic partnership, and everybody who gets married in a marriage will go to a church. And so it was developing that way. But I find there are a lot of hypocrites within the Republican Party who say, yes, we want states' rights unless it's an issue that we just want to uh, control and not watch different states do different things with. You have to be consistent. You, you, you do, and, and and look, you know, um, marriage marriage should be, you know, these issues should be left um, to to the states. Um, but at, at the same time, you, you know, on the flip side of that is, if the state of Texas decides, for instance, that it wants to make marriage between one man and one woman, um, in, in in I believe what thirty eight states um, has, has, um, you know, passed legislation to, to define marriages between one man and one woman. And, and they should have that right. Just as Maryland, um, you know, the people went to the polls, they voted and, you know, passed same sex marriage. And, um, and, and so I think it's critical that, you know, people on both sides of the issues, um, re- respect what the voters, um, in, in the States uh, ha- have done. And, you know, the States were meant to be incubators of democracy. Um, so that one state did something, it didn't uh, infect the other um, 49 states. Um, the other uh, thing with regards to the states' rights issue um, is, w- with regards, well, when we were talking about with, with the gay rights issue, sure, the church and how the churches approach it, um, had it been chosen that if the gay rights advocates were going to say we make it a religious uh, issue as opposed to being a civil rights issue, which I thought was a mistake, I think they would have been able to gain much more ground quicker because individual, like the Episcopal Church, said we will marry same-sex couples, and they had women priests. Well, then if you want to join that church and you want to have a same-sex marriage, then I think you'd be more inclined because that is a protected constitutional right, the freedom of religion, mm-hmm. that your religion allows that, you probably get more acceptance because your church accepted that. And I think the states, if they had all the heterosexuals as well as the homosexuals doing another thing other than marriage, domestic partnerships, um, to me, that's made a lot more sense because uh, you needed to give marriage back to the church. I don't know. I think the only reason that government ever stole marriage was so they could tax it. Uh, I don't know any other reason, you know, to put a license on it and tax it, control it. Right. And, you know, you know, I think one of the things that, that we see is, you know, we see we, we see probably um, hypocrisy on both sides. And, you know, I think it's important that, you, you know, uh, we, we maintain our religious liberties. You know, we, we maintain that, mm-hmm. you know, um, people um, have the right um, in, in this country, you know what I'm saying, to run their businesses the way they, they see fit. And, you know, um, r- religious organizations should have the right to marry, you know what I'm saying, who they, who they choose to, um, w- you know, without fear of, of, of reprisal. But, um, a- a- again, it's one of those things that just it, it has to be controlled a- at the state level. Um, but, but we just got to make sure that uh, a- at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're protecting our religious um, liberties um, and our religious freedoms, but we're also um, protecting and honoring our, our individual freedoms, and, and I think that really is uh, the key. That if 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 we as citizens just respect that each of us um, are, 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 are we're born in this country, we're U.S. citizens, and that we each have um, individual freedoms and liberties that, that that are given to us by our Creator, and and to respect each other, irregardless of whether or not we agree. 
Hey, Dave, we've got a few minutes here left. Um, why don't you tell us anything that you want to tell us about the cruise campaign and make sure that uh, you start off by telling us how, if anybody's out there and they want to get involved, they want to contact you with any questions, you get further information, how do they do that? And then um, end by telling us anything that you think is important that the people uh, listening know about uh, the senator and his presidential bid. And I appreciate um, Delegate Smeagol for allowing us to come on and, and, and talk to you, talk to your listeners. You know, in just probably about um, three weeks, uh, Maryland voters in uh, particular are going to be going to the polls on April 14th for early voting to decide who they want to be the next president of the United States. And do you want a commander in chief that is going to honor and respect the Constitution? Uh, do you want a commander in chief who is uh, willing to utter the term in the words, um, you know, Islamic terrorism? Do you want a president that is committed to going out and utterly destroying ISIS and then coming home and not nation building? You know, do you want a president that is going to uh, go to Washington and cut the size of government? Um, or do you want a, a president that is going to go to Washington and make deals with Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi. And, and, that's, the, and that's the decision that, that lays before uh, Maryland voters. And if you want someone that is going to defend the Constitution and you want to learn more about Senator Cruz's campaign here in Maryland, then I would encourage you to uh, reach out to us here in Maryland. And you can do that by calling us at area code 443-889-5023. And if you have not already, you can go online, um, learn more about Senator Cruz's policy at tedcruz.org, tedcruz.org. Um, if you would like to donate, um, we would love to have you um, help us out financially with the campaign. Um, but we would love to get you involved in Maryland. We would love to get you um, on our team and, and working together because, listen, this election is the most critical election of our lifetime. You know, the last time we had an election this important was when uh, Ronald Reagan defeated Jimmy Carter. And the similarities between then and now are, are, are eerily the same. You, you know, our country faced malaise. It, it, it faced depression. It, it faced economic stagnation. And Reagan came in and, and Reagan cut taxes and he, he rebuilt our military. And what we saw was an economic boom that, that was absolutely um, explosive. And we can do that again, but we need Republicans, we need conservatives, we need libertarians, we need Reagan Democrats to unite behind our campaign. And we are seeing this all across our country, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, us unite here in Maryland for a great victory on April 26th for Senator Cruz. Outstanding. Thank you for joining us, David. And if anybody out there is listening, I'm going to be having a town hall forum tomorrow in Carroll County. So come on out to the library in Carroll County um, and join us. Uh, you can get information on uh, SpiegelforCongress.com. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. 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 David.